All right, guys, today we're going to talk about powers and exponents. Now, when you're using exponents, what you do is you take an expression like 5 times 5 times 5, which has equal factors. It's this 5 just repeating itself. You can write that using an exponent. Now, an exponent tells you how many times a number is used as a factor. In other words, how many times you're multiplying it. Okay, a number that is expressed using exponent, that whole thing is called a power. And the number that is being multiplied over and over again is called the base. So if we're looking at this instance right here, we have 5 and a 3 here. That 3 that's raised up and a little smaller is considered to be your exponent. That tells you how many times you're multiplying. Uh, and your 5, which is a little bigger here, is considered to be your base. That's the number that's being multiplied over and over again. In this case, the 5 is being multiplied um, by itself three times. And then this whole thing all together is considered to be the whole thing is called a power. All right, the whole thing is called a power. So, when you're saying exponents, like for example, when you have 5 raised to an exponent of 1, you don't say 5 raised to an exponent of 1, what you say is 5 to the first power. Now what that's telling you is you have one 5, or just a single 5 all by itself. Alright, now when you have 5 with an exponent of 2, you say 5 to the second power, or 5 squared. All right, now I, saw, I apologize for this being bigger than the box, guys, but I couldn't get the font any smaller on this. So, But it's 5 to the second power, or 5 squared. It means the same thing. You could say it either way. And what that means is you have two 5s multiplied by each other. All right, then you have you have... 5 raised to the power of 3, you would say that that's 5 to the third power, or 5 cubed. Same thing. And, or similar to what we did, said it was squared. Now 5 to the third power is 5 cubed. And what that means is you have 5 multiplied by itself 3 times. Then if you had 5 raised to an exponent of 4, you would say 5 to the 4th power, or 5 to the 4th. You don't have any special word for the 4th or much further on beyond that. And what that means is you would have 5 multiplied by itself 4 times. Now we can keep going with this. Um, we could go you know, 5 to the 5th, 5 to the 6th, and so on. But what happens is, basically, anytime you raise 5 to any number of power, you would say it's 5, if you have just a general saying to any number of power, you'd say 5 to the nth power or 5 to the nth. So you would be multiplying 5 by itself, all right, an nth number of times. Okay, an nth number of times. Or n, or you'd have n factors. Okay, so let's move on. Let me move this up and I might have to erase some of this wording. Yep, I will. Okay, so just give me a second guys and I'll get these words out of your way. Okay, that's better. Those words are out of our way. All right, and we need to talk briefly real quick here about what happens when you have any number except for zero raised to a zero power. That's just defined as one. For example, 1 to the 0 power is 1, but also 2 to the 0 power is 1. 3 to the 0 power is 1. And we could keep right on going. Any number x to the 0 power is going to be 1, as long as x does not equal 0. And just to 
for right now, we're just going to, if you just want to start remembering that, anything to the zero power is one. I'm going to get into a little bit of more explanation of why that is when we talk about negative exponents a little later on. and It'll make more sense. But for now, let's just remember that anything to the zero power is going to be one. All right, let's look at a few of these examples. If we want to write each expression using exponents. Remember, what you're being multiplied over and over again is your base. So, for example, 4 is being multiplied by itself, so that's going to be the base. And we have 5, 4, so it's going to be 4 to the 5th power. Here we have negative 8 multiplied by itself now, so then negative 8 is your base. But you really should put parentheses around this to really realize that it's a negative number being raised to power. So it's going to be negative 8 to the 3rd power. Here we have 6 as your base, so it's going to be 6 to the 4th power, because there's 4 6's. Here your base is negative 2, and there's 4 of them, so it's negative 2 to the 4th power. And you can have fractions as, base, as a base. This is 1 half raised to the 3rd power, 1 half cubed. All right. Now let's look at the same thing is true for variables. Remember, variables take the place of numbers, so we can do the same thing with variables. Here your base is going to be y, and we have 6y's, so it's y to the 6th power. Here you have k plus 2 multiplied by itself four times. So your base is k plus 2, and you need parentheses around it to show that it's that whole thing raised to the 4th power. If you didn't have those parentheses, only the 2 would be raised to the 4th power. Now here you can have a bunch of different um, variables kind of in the same expression. The 5 is only being multiplied once, so that's just going to stay 5. R is being multiplied twice, so you'd have r to the second power. And s is being multiplied four times, so we have s to the fourth power. Here in this example in number 4, 9 is only being multiplied once. F for a base is being multiplied four times, so it's f to the fourth, and g is only being multiplied once. So g is, is just has a power of one, it's understood it has a power of one there. And you notice the power only goes with the, with the number or the variable directly before it. Okay, let's switch over to the next page, the back page, and go through a few more examples. Okay guys, now we need to do a little bit of a review with order of operations. We've done, we did order of operations earlier in the year, but we didn't do exponents. So now we need to bring in the exponents, because our book, our textbook kind of separated them until we talked about exponents. So if you remember, with order of operations, your first step is to simplify all expressions inside grouping symbols first. Okay. So when we say grouping symbols, most of the time probably you guys use parentheses, but we use brackets and some other things too. Now we're adding in, this is where we're adding in a new step that we didn't do before. Okay, now that we've covered um, exponents and powers, we know that really the next thing you're supposed to do, second step, is to evaluate all the powers or deal with all the exponents. Then the rest of it should be kind of review. You're going to do all your multiplying and dividing. And you got to make sure you do it in order from left to right. And then your last step is to do any all adding and subtracting. Again, you got to make sure it's in order from left to right. All right. And you guys might remember your please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to kind of help you remember this. And the, you know, the E is for exponents. I use the word powers here, but... Those are kind of interchangeable with what we're doing. So now let's go through some examples and refresh our brains. If you look at this first example, it's 3 squared plus negative 2. Now we've got to do our exponent here first before we do our adding. So we're going to 3 squared is 3 times 3, or 9, and 9 plus a negative 2 is going to be a positive 7. Okay. All right, now remember here in example two, anything to the zero power is one. So this is like one plus nine or 10. We had to do that exponent first. Now, in number three, we have to do the problem inside the parentheses first. We gotta do any grouping symbols first. So what we have here is four times, two plus one is three to the fourth power. Now our next step is going to be actually to do 3 to the 4th power, which is 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3, which is 27, times another 3, which would be 81. 
And then we can finish off by doing 4 times 81, which is actually 324. All right, now in example number four, we have to do what's in the grouping symbols first. But, and even within those grouping symbols, you have to follow order of operations. So within those grouping symbols, I have to do that exponent first. So I'm going to have five times. Then within this, I'm going to do the three cubed first. So that's three times three, which is nine, times another three, which is 27. And then we can do the 27 minus 20, and we would get seven. So we have five times seven which is 35. Okay, let me move this up, guys, and then I'm going to have to give me a second to erase those words again, and then we'll do the next examples. Okay. Okay, now from here, we can look at how at lot, even more algebra comes into play. We're going to evaluate each algebra expression in these first few, these first couple. It says let x equal 6 and let y equal negative 2. So you got to plug in your numbers for your variables. So here we're going to have 6 squared plus y. Oh, excuse me, let me start plugging in it. Uh, let me erase that. Just a second. Sorry about that, guys. Jump back on here. All right. So it's going to be 6 plus, we could have a negative 2 cubed. Okay, so you got to do your exponents first. So 6 squared would be 6 times 6, which is 36, plus negative 2 cubed. Now anytime you have a negative number raised to an odd power, your answer is going to be negative. If it was raised to an even power, it would be positive. Because if you, know, if you stop and think about it, negative 2 times negative 2 would be a positive 4, a positive 4 times a negative 2 is going to be a negative 8. So if you do 36 plus a negative 8, signs are different, so you actually end up subtracting, it's actually going to be 28. Now here, y to the 4th minus 3 times x to the 0 power. So this is going to be negative 2 to the 4th power minus 3 times 6 to the 0 power. Now what that actually is, negative 2 to the 4th power, now here's a negative raised to an even power, so it's raised to an even power, I know I'm going to have a positive number, which 2 to the 4th power is 16. All right, minus 3 times, and anything to the 0 power, remember, is 1. Now our next step here is we've got to do our multiplication here before we do our subtraction. So we're going to have 16 minus 3 times 1 is 3. And we can finish off that with that subtraction and we get an answer of 13. All right, let's look at these last few. We've got some fractions in here in this, these, some of these two. So here we've got 10 plus, it's b squared, so that's going to be negative 2 squared. So we've got to do our exponent first, so we're going to have 10 plus negative 2 times negative 2 would be a positive 4, and 10 plus 4 is 14. And you guys notice I'm showing my work. All right, so here we have a plus b cubed or raised to the third power, so we're going to have 5 oops, plus a negative 2 raised to the third power. Now in this case, we got to do what's inside the parentheses first. We got to do with the grouping symbol first. So 5 plus a negative 2 would be a positive 3, and we're going to raise that to the third power cubit. So 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 is 27. And this last one, we've got 2 minus c squared, or 2 minus 3 fourths squared. So that's going to be 2 minus 3 fourths times 3 fourths will be 9 sixteenths. Okay, so a couple different ways you could look at it. Um, you could do like 2 minus 9 sixteenths. So we're going to have to get a fractional part. So we're going to borrow, make this a 1, and we make this 16 sixteenths. So we're going to have 1 and 7 sixteenths for an answer here. All right, guys, you can now um, get started with the homework.